Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Journey to Develop Her podcast. Today, we have a special guest, Mr. Anthony Lawson. How are you, Anthony? Doing pretty good. Thank you. I appreciate you for asking. Awesome. And if you don't know, I'm your host, Deontay Chantel. And we have Anthony. He's a real estate commercial investor. His specialty and his niche is in group homes. So we're going to talk all about how we can also invest in group homes. I've yeah. even reached out to Anthony a few times. It's like, yeah. you know, how much bread do you need to get started? So he's gonna go over that with us yeah. today. And yeah. Anthony, um, I'll let you go ahead and do a formal intro of yourself. Um, yeah, for sure, I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, so my name is Anthony Lawson. I'm a fund manager, well now a fund manager, but the uh, commercial real estate investor, um, um, she hit around the nail predominantly. I do um, group homes, assisted living facilities, uh, sober living facilities, so different, uh, you know, facilities, but with a little different spin to it. Um, and, and I primarily do those out of commercial buildings, and I invest in different kinds of commercial buildings as well, such as single tenant buildings, maybe like something you see like a McDonald's in, you know, or something like that in strip centers. So we do those as well. Uh, we put those, well, I'm now are going to put those into the fund. And um, I do have a uh, general construction uh, company as well with my partner, Kyle. So we got that going. Uh, we license in New Jersey and in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. So we have that. And then um, I do like the wholesale still. So, you know, some deals that I don't necessarily want to buy, you know, I sign those out to somebody that, you know, specialize in that. So, you know, so I know it's a lot to go on, but, you know. <laughs> No, like that's incredible. I mean, everyone who has been listening to the podcast, they know I started out as a wholesaler in the investment space. So that's not foreign. Um, I actually just put back together a wholesale team. So, hey, we about to, regardless. And sometimes we come across deals that we do want to develop. We do want to keep, right? Absolutely. Um, But some deals out here just don't make no sense, but it may make sense to a hedge fund or someone else who's- more money than us at the moment <laughs> for them. so we're like hey let's wholesale it so I yeah. think that's great you have to keep um with real estate you can skin the cat many different ways many different times right. so I think that's yeah. great that you're doing those things so Absolutely. how did you get started in real estate and did you get started okay. in the commercial space initially actually I did not um I got started by something and it sounds so basic but I got started because I literally, if you're from New Jersey and you ride down, I think it's 280 East, going mm-hmm. towards the NGIT exit, got off right there. I don't know why. I, I tell us on every interview, but something told me to talk to the gentleman. He was homeless. And then uh, he was a homeless veteran. So I spoke to him about a good, say about two, three minutes. Good conversation. Told him what to do, how to get himself back together. You know, the VA could take care of him and things like that. And I gave him some money. And then from there, I said, you know what? What if I could make this a business model? So my first property was a shared living property out of a residential house, six bed, two baths. And uh, took the basement, got that with an FHA loan. Uh, so I did not do the four, three, two, one rule that everybody does. So my first one was a single, uh, shared out the, the uh, space. And I said, man, this is a lot of cash flow. And then I had a lot of um, uh, people with disabilities. I had some seniors in there. And I had a, a few veterans in there as well. So from there, I said, you know what? I can uh, duplicate this again. So my second property was lease and um, got in there with very little to no money, if any, if anything. And then the lease didn't commence because I how I wear my paperwork. The lease did not commence until I got everything functioning. So then from there, I dropped the wall. You know, I got a little creative. Um, the owner wanted 2400 I was bringing in like bringing in like 62.50 or something like that by sharing out the space. I shared it out to couples. That was my niche in that market is in Patterson. And I was sharing out the couples. I was charging them 950. And then uh, I was five beds. Uh, it was originally three beds, um, two baths. Charged out the couples, 950 each person. And that Airbnb, the basement. So um, got a little creative on that one. Then from there, I saved my money and just bought another one and bought another one things like that and you asked a very good question how you know what was that commercial i honestly don't even remember my first commercial deal and it sounds crazy but um i just kind of stumbled in commercial i knew that's how the wealthy you know continuously you know uh maintain their wealth build the wealth through mm-hmm. commercial assets so now i like to uh, focus more on my energy on that 
um, holding on to commercial assets. If it's residential, I will buy it, but I'll probably reposition it, repurpose it, and then sell it. And then right. commercial, I like to hold on to long-term wealth. Well, I want to stop you right there. So run that yep. back. You said that you met this homeless man off yep. of the 280 exit. I actually live near yep. the 280 exit, so I know exactly. Okay. I'm in East Orange, so. Okay. He was in my hood. And I mean, uh, I, <laughs> and I, I'm very familiar with the strategy um, because okay. I contemplated it myself and I've yep. seen um, presentations on it when I was yep. when I, in the Midwest, a lot of what yep. they do there and where you also work apparently too i believe um they, correct um assisted living but for those yeah. who's in that don't know anything but they may have a single property right now that a whole yeah. another wholesaler sent them or whatever the case may be they may even own one and it's not generating them any money how do you correct. actually get those type of contracts for veteran assisted living or whatever mm -hmm. how do you actually get those type of that money that 6200 a month type of money Right. So it depends on it, it depends on who you help, honestly, and your, your target demographic. So if you want to be homeless, then you can go to the hospitals. People don't realize that the hospitals, as a taxpayer, people that can come in without insurance can still get seen. Mm. And it's usually a lot of homeless people. And they actually have a segment in it don't matter what hospital you go to. Every hospital has a segment where when people come in, they get them fixed up, whatever the case may be, give them shots, whatever. And then with, when they get discharged, they have um, social workers that try to at least find them housing. A lot of people don't know that, but you can go to those social workers and say, hey, you know, this is what I do. I share out my space, so I have a facility. Here's my business card. Check out our website. We would love to tour you. Social worker may or may not come out, or they may just start sending you people. And from right. there, that's one avenue. Um, that's what I, I started doing a lot. And then you can go to uh, homeless shelters. So that, that used to be my hotspot when I first started. Homeless shelters, getting your business card. Because people don't realize a lot of the guys and girls that's in the um, homeless space, a lot of them do get income. A lot of them get income. They get uh, social security income. It's just not enough to live off of. So, right. you know, if they get 800 a month, I'm only charging, at the time I was charging 550. And that includes me doing everything. You know, um, only thing they were responsible for was food. So they had way more than enough to go out there and live off of. You right. know, for um, for me doing the utilities, you know, fixing up the place, you know, and all this other stuff. So I was taking care of all of that. I charged them that. And then, you know, just, just finding out different ways. Now, if you're talking about assisted living, your target demographic, right, it's all about target demographics. It's going to be seniors. So then you're going to be targeting the seniors with Alzheimer's, you know, all seniors with uh, dementia, you know, things like that. And then you can go into a nursing home to acquire them. Sounds crazy, right? So a nursing home is like the highest level of care, you know, right. so uh, people don't realize that nursing homes reject a lot of seniors that are not eligible. Mm -hmm. So where do they go? They send them to an assisted living facility. So you could be on the forefront by giving them a business card and saying, listen, this is what I do. I have facilities. I would love to do something with you and you can send me your referrals and I can see you my referrals because with, they all work together, right? So if you have right. an assisted living, some people are not eligible for your care now because it's too much care. So then you send them to a nurse home. So, you know, you, you guys all work together in that kind of space. And then um, as far as you said, like the money and everything like that, you know, when you buy an existing facility, usually for assisted living, you have like a, a Medicaid waivers, you know, and things like that. So insurance companies is, and it sounds funny saying like, oh, insurance companies charge like two to 3,000 for a lot of people. It's like, oh, that's a lot. But private right. pay, can you? I seen private pay can go all the way up to seven thousand. Actually, New one Jersey, person? yeah, one person. Oh, I, I gotta seen, put them right now. Let's, let's go. <laughs> I seen New Jersey, you can get high as ten thousand for private pay. Now, what kind of in, um, what kind of and, and not for nothing? Like I shouldn't know that too because I used to be a paralegal dealing with Medicare mm -hmm. type of clients. You know, right. Nursing homes, they the state pays them like twelve thousand thousand dollars per month so I correct should... per person per person yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. You know we need to get a nursing <laughs> nursing it. homes you know what nursing homes i will buy a nursing home and reposition it to assisted living the reason why nursing homes have a lot of expenses yeah and not only that yes all of them are business segment in different business categories but nursing homes are on the highest level so when you're on the highest level 
guess who are overseeing and watching the government? So nursing homes, I like to buy them at a distress, which hints I did that on the sober living facility that we just acquired about two months now, 115 beds in Cleveland. And right. it was an old nursing home. And we you know, converted it about 10,000 square feet, commercial building, you know, things like that. But um, yeah, I like to reposition those and flip them. Or I put them on the contract and assign them. I do have buyers that buy nursing homes. Okay. So, okay, let's go back to the military. So we want specific okay. military programs because actually okay. one of my contracting friends, they actually want to do, that's like his whole business plan. He's an ex-veteran. So, okay. Uh, and he, he was telling me like to go find him some stuff. And I'm like, okay, do you got the money? He didn't really have the money at the time, but okay. how do we actually get those type of contracts? Are we just looking for um, VA programs? Locally. Yes, you hit it. You hit it around the nail. So VA, the thing with VA, people, you know, approach me. Oh, I just want to do veteran housing. I mean, that's great. I would love to do just veteran housing too, but it takes time to build rapport with the VA because mm -hmm. VA have a certain window that they look for certain criteria. And okay. if you fall out of that window, you just got to wait until next year or whenever they re -roll, enroll out the program. So they got like what's called the uh, continuum program, um, residential care continuum program. Then they got the uh, the like the one that you can get per diem, meaning like say I think for New Jersey, if I'm not mistaken, I know it went up. I think it's like fifty six dollars to like fifty six dollars like sixty dollars a day, something like that to pay. You. Then you know how much you would get by just multiplying that times thirty days for the month, and then but they pay you every day, you know. So it, it sounds crazy saying oh sixty dollars, but it's just like you're saying sixty dollars from twenty people, you know, and it adds up at the end of the month. So um, VA, they have different programs. I would tell anybody to go to va.gov mm -hmm. and um, stay on top of the website or have uh, somebody that actually works there. See, I missed that window for East Orange. Mm -hmm. They actually needed hospice care. Hospice, I don't really teach hospice so much because it's, it's, it's a little bit different. Yeah. But hospice, I would do. So hospice is, everybody should know what that is, is just pretty much somebody that's on there, you know, pretty much, you know, they're a deathbed. So, um, and they have a registered nurse, watch over them and things like that. And if they have to put a plug, they would do that, you know, according to the family and all that good stuff. And, um, but with hospice, the VA for East Orange needed it. Uh, it just had to be about three years ago. And okay. um, I didn't have any properties for the East Orange region. All my properties was in North. And um, it was two hours, they gave you a radius restriction. Now, how did I know about this? It wasn't me going on VA.gov like I should have been. But um, I knew somebody that actually worked inside the VA. So they sent me an email and said, hey, man, you need to you know, look at this. And if you got a property, you need to contact such and such. So um, I said, OK, let me find a property first. So I was calling all my investor friends and all that. Nobody had a property. Everybody had multifamily, but I needed a single family. So um, it didn't work out. But long story short, hospice can pay you around 10 to 15 as well for each person I read that's from the VA. We're going to work on that behind the scenes. <laughs> And not for nothing, like, I actually know somebody um, that recently was told they had to go to hospice. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you are not going to hospice. You're too young to be going to hospice. The devil's wow. over. And I feel like I could make, I spoke so much faith into his situation, prayed for him, still praying for him. He went from stage four to stage three. So now he doesn't need the hospice. But I'm like, oh, the wow. moment, yeah, like okay. the moment he heard hospice and he heard stage four cancer yep. it was like he didn't have symptoms and all of a sudden he had symptoms wow. and that's just the, you know that's the devil just trying to play tricks with you right absolutely but thank god um he yeah it's starting to um go down mm -hmm. or you can call it yeah yeah but anyway he gonna live and not die and that's what i told him so can you imagine if you could make that impact on some i mean it ain't gonna help everybody i don't think but mm -hmm you know, help somebody mentally, spiritually change their mindset in yep. that environment. Because that environment is where you go to die. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, it can mess with your mental. Absolutely. Yeah, literally. Yep. He, I mean, he just, as soon as he heard that, he just was, as soon as he heard the word cancer, he just yep. started feeling ill. Right. Right. And it's true. The day before, the, the minute before he heard that, he wasn't sick. So yep. it's just nuts to me. Absolutely. Yeah. And one thing too, before I forget, Deontay, if you don't mind me mentioning this, yeah. is because it's, I think it's very important for everybody to know you have a nonprofit, right? Yes. So what people don't realize is, and I'm going to let you know this too, because you can apply, like mm -hmm. ASAP if you 
good. You can partner up with, with nonprofits to get your facility going. Now, for instance, I'm gonna give you an example. You have a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. HUD just put out a statement, and I put this all on my social media because everybody knows I do facilities. HUD put out right. a statement. They are willing to pay, they have allocated funds up to 20 million to convert multifamily into assisted living facilities. And that's a, in a form of a grant. Now, is so this you have to be a nonprofit though. Definitely a nonprofit with a 501c3. Yes. Now, yeah. is this a small multifamily or are you talking about like something 20 units? I plus? think they want, yeah, I think they want um, something bigger on the commercial side because what right. I'm saying throughout the country, this is this is actually no better time to buy uh, assisted living no, facilities or any facility because so many seniors are aging. They are. There's too many yep. seniors. Um, over too the last many. three years, I mean, when I got heavy in development three years ago, when I tell you I got the presentation from boys out in Missouri, but they was okay. running down. I was like, oh, okay, let me get my coins together and let me revert mm -hmm. back to it. And now three years later, it's even worse after COVID, right? Everybody's yeah. like, everybody, but a lot of people are like in a jam when it comes yeah. to financial status. You, you see a lot of evictions going on. Yeah. Elderly are also being affected. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then the rents just went up crazy over the last two years, so. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's important for people to know because even some, like some of my students wanted to be a nonprofit. So I said, okay, you know, this is what you should do. I don't train people on being a nonprofit. I could just point you to the right direction. Right. So, but if you go that route, you can still help a lot of people because a nonprofit has access to things that a for-profit does not. Exactly. So it then they get, you know, uh, front of the, the front line first as far as grants. Now, there's a lot of grants out there for for-profits for because I just got a few grants from my group home. Nice. So, um, and, you know, I just I just think that that was important for people to know. So, you know, staying on top of the VA, staying on top of HUD websites and stuff like that because they do put out alerts and time frames or windows that you got to apply to order to get these grants. Right, and that's awesome. And we had someone on here a couple months back talking about group homes. She was a coach. Yeah. What does one need to start a group home, in your opinion? Okay. Do you actually so, need thousands of dollars to get started? So you do need a little money to get started. Mm -hmm. The reason why I say that, because if you're doing it from the ground up, now I'm going to teach you two ways. Same thing I teach in my course, but two ways. You could do from the ground up, or you can bypass that. It's already set up and buy an existing. Mm -hmm. That's when you can prevail, because an existing one is already set up. You don't got to put a fire suppression system. You don't got to go to the state and do this and that and just paperwork because it's already set up. It's pretty much turnkey. You just got to, you know, uh, turnkey meaning like it's already set up. You know, if it's a distressed facility, then obviously, you know, you need to read that. But to answer your question, if it's from the ground up, then yes, you got to apply online for the application. And then I know it can be daunting and stressful for some people because they're like, okay, I called this, the zoning department and telling me they don't know what a group home is and you know, all this other stuff. So it's usually the state that handles it. Um, and then the zoning, yeah, you can follow up with them and see if it's zoned. But, you know, the funny thing is, if you read the Fair Housing Act, that yeah, is everybody has access to, you really don't even need a license for a group home, which you don't. The biggest difference that I explain is the license route is because you're having your staff pass out medication. Gotcha. You have your staff cook it. You know, you have more of that hands-on, you have staff to do all of the extra stuff, the paperwork with the state. Now, if you're unlicensed, which I have licensed and unlicensed uh, group homes, if mm -hmm. you're unlicensed, usually you have what's called a house manager, a living house manager, and then you're not providing any services. It's just strictly a room and board, sort of like a room house, but right. you know, it's, it's ran just like that. So, you know, there's multiple ways you can get it done. It's just usually a lot of people flock to the, the state license one because it's a lot more money that you can't make for the state. That's that's good that I know. So when I first got started, um, I think when I first started learning wholesaling, yeah. I knew, I, you know, well, before even that, I knew I wanted to be a developer, right? I knew Newark, yeah. was on, like Newark was on, like every house, every other house in Newark used to be abandoned. Let's just put it like that. Oh, I know. I'm from Newark. Okay. So, you know, um, yeah. so I knew back when I didn't have no money that I wanted to be a developer. And then yeah. shortly after that, I knew I wanted to start a group home and okay. mine was going to be for domestic violence. Mm. Um, I was supposed to do it with my baby daddy, but you know, we broke up. Okay. So I, I never got back in the mindset. And then recently okay. um, I was learning how to set up group homes and actually was going to use my properties in Missouri 
turn it into okay. homes with programs that are, that are already in place. They would just rent mm. my house, basically. Yeah. I was going to rent my house to group home. They would do whatever they want to do. They just, just pay me my money. That's all I cared about. Um, yep. But, you know, my uncle who um, had mental illness issues like schizophrenia, I noticed okay. when he was trying to come out of wherever he was, they had group homes too for people with mental illness. So I was like, oh, yep. you know, maybe I should put a program together. I don't yep. know how to run that because that's a whole nother situation. Yep. But right. they in, in Essex County, there's a lot of landlords that are renting it out to programs and nonprofits that manage Correct. you know individuals with mental illness. So I just Correct. think that's incredible that you bring that up. Now I know everybody that is going to listen to this podcast, they want to know how are you finding these distressed <laughs> um, properties that we're talking about? Yeah. You know what's so funny is a, a lot of people think like a it's like a fairy tale or like a, a magic button. So right. it's as simple as this, right? If you look at certain municipalities and things like that, especially the licensed ones, they easier they easier to find. I mean, unlicensed usually buying a property that you think can fit usually it's like a large single family or something like that, or, or multi multi flex commercial building um, for general purpose uses. But if it's for the state, usually you have to do toy around keywords because I see throughout the country they call group homes different words. They call them adult care facilities, they call them adult daycare, you know, there's just different things that they call them throughout the uh, country, group homes, you know, et cetera. And you can say group home, uh, licensed group homes, New Jersey, or something. I'm just throwing out the first state that came in my head, New Jersey. And it's usually a list that comes up of all licensed ones. You okay. pick up the phone and you call them. Okay, that's it. That's simple. I'll and then, and then that. I can tell you now, New Jersey, New Jersey, you can go to the, uh, the uh da, 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 the the rooming and boarding standards they 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 regulate facilities as well health they call them healthcare facilities they call it different things and okay. you click the link you they're gonna give you like uh search the parcel or like um click this to download the Excel when you download the Excel it's like three thousand facilities in New Jersey you literally it, they give you the name the point of contact, the director, the email, and the phone number. And you just cold call. That's it. Or you, if you're in the area, you drive around, get your business card. Hey, um, is the owner around? Um, it usually when you ask for the owner, people want to say, and who are you? <laughs> and then you just build rapport with them and just, hey, listen, you know, I would like to talk to the owner about some things. Or you can take it from the approach of, I like to talk to the owner about some things. I got an elderly person that I think uh, I, I probably want to put in this group home. Then when you get them on the phone, you say, listen, I actually found a place for them, but would you be interested in buying? And right. then, I mean, sell it, I'm sorry. Right. And then, you know, from there, you just kind of take it from there. Cool. So mm -hmm. do you think it's much more wise to do an actual distressed property when it comes to group homes? Or should we try to get something literally turnkey where you're just getting the key and moving on with your life? And like, Yeah, I would say get, a, get turnkey all day, all day long. Because okay. I tell people from the ground up is more advanced. You got to have a little skin in the game to have money for fire suppression system. Right. Not so much the ground up, but like, because oh, okay. I know you're doing a rehab on some of yours. Yes. So like, when I mean like turnkey, like I don't want to do nothing. I just want to just. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Because I Absolutely. know like, where are you, like, I don't know if you're doing deals and I see a lot of your deals in the Midwest, like Ohio, yeah. um, Jersey. I feel like, what do you think it's like more expensive? like yes if I'm your client you think I should do the Midwest also correct at all day long now the reason yeah. why I tell people this I'm from New Jersey and I'm not even really focused on New Jersey right. um don't get me wrong I I am I'm always looking for a good deal in New Jersey because I know that you know the Midwest is a higher cat New Jersey I can sell at a lower cat which means I can make more money whenever I'm ready to sell it right. New Jersey I'm always looking the problem with New Jersey is people want way too much money so it sounds good saying, okay, I got a 10 bed. I'm getting 10,000 per person. Okay, it's 100,000 a month. Okay. But if they want 15 million for asking price, it's like, doesn't make any sense. You know, so on the facility side, I'm seeing in the Midwest, I, I can, I'm getting them a little uh, easier. New Jersey, I am still looking though. Don't get me wrong. Because I know New Jersey's like the back of my hand. But what I am doing for New Jersey, just to let everybody know, 
I'm going from northern New Jersey to south, southern New Jersey, specifically Atlantic City. Atlantic City has a lot of incentives. Atlantic City has a lot of program and, th- and they actually have um, throughout the whole state, the most room and houses in one city throughout the whole state. So a lot of people don't realize that. So you, it's a good way if you want to get into the room and house space or if you want to actually just get into assisted living or group homes. Yeah, for sure. You know, just make sure it's in, a, it's in an area where if, you, if you're buying it, like you, to your point, turnkey, that, okay. you know, you had a fund or a partner that can partner with you to make sure it can, you know, it can be done. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't turn away New Jersey. The only state that I would turn away from that I'm not a big fan of is New York. I knew because New York that. laws, New York laws is just too crazy. I would even go to California because California. Well, I'm sorry for cutting you off. Go ahead, finish mm-hmm. the California statement. California, you don't need a license at all. Even for assisted living, up to six beds. That's powerful. Yeah, that up is Up to powerful. six beds, you don't need a license. That is powerful. Indiana, you don't need a license for assisted living. Detroit, you don't necessarily need a license, but the way they word it, you can't do certain things. So I'm gonna give it to you, for example, about Indiana. You don't need a license. You need a license now or start reapplying if you're feeding them the medication. But if you're watching them take their medication or had somebody else, social worker, or whatever, take their medication, you don't need a license. So it's like small little stuff you gotta watch in the paperwork that they tell you. But in certain states, you don't need a license for up to so many beds. Right. So, um, you know, but New York, the laws is, is just too daunting. Uh, the laws don't make any sense. If you, it, This is just if you ask me, I'm going to always keep it real with everybody. No, keep so, it with that. Then. Yes, not, and, and it just doesn't make any sense. New York City, I was thinking about like upstate New York, like Sarah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is it the same law? Because, you know, they got the upstate and the downstate. But yeah, it's so up, upstate, the laws is a little different. If you're okay. talking about the city, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't do the city. Brooklyn, Queen, no. But if you go upstate, yes, because you can find them a little bit cheaper. And then the laws too, even if somebody wanted to buy an apartment building or something, the laws are still even different from like renter standpoint. Mm-hmm. Totally different from upstate to, to the inner city. Okay. So um, yeah, I, I would definitely focus more on the, on the inner city, but New York as a whole, I just kind of stay away from. New Jersey, I am still looking. So if anybody finds something, I, I'll take it down. Okay, so yeah. if y'all listening, we I do hear this, he's looking for yeah. These type of properties in South Jersey, Atlantic City yep. area specifically. So yep. that's good to know. What about like Pennsylvania? What's going on there? Do you know? Pennsylvania is good. Pennsylvania, I'm actually, um, I need to get the seller back on the phone. A wholesaler passed me the deal. It's uh, 130 beds. And I'm trying to, it's actually one of the largest for the whole state of Pennsylvania uh, facility wise. Just the seller has kind of a imaginary number in his head and it just doesn't work at that number. So Trying to get them to come down a little bit. I'll follow up with them maybe in a few weeks, see what's going on. Awesome. So how do you analyze these deals? So for instance, let's see, use that deal of this crazy number. You don't have to say yep. what that is. What is it cash flowing for you to determine your offer? What Not necessarily cash. Okay, so yes, cash flow does come into play. I look at that. So when to analyze it, you want to look at the taxes because it is a business as well too. Mm-hmm. Now, don't get me wrong, the paper, I mean, the taxes and all that, it's not going to tell you the full story. So I just want to let people know that because people got some good CPAs out there. So uh, you need to kind of dig through it, but at least see where uh, you can dig through it and do what's called an add back. So an add back is, let's say, I don't know, Deontay, me, you did a joint venture, we got a hundred bed facility. Now we pay ourselves both a hundred thousand a month. The new owner can say, oh, wait. I'm not gonna pay myself 200. I'm gonna pay myself only 100. So that's an add back. So you can oh, add back to the cash flow another 100 grand. So you. you wanna look for things like that out of the taxes. Uh, I look for PL, rent roll, itemize, itemize expenses. And then that's how I kind of run my numbers. I'm pretty quick with it to give a, a quick offer to the whoever buying it to me or if I'm a direct seller. Right. And, um, and that's pretty much it for actually analyzing it. Group home. You kind of do the same thing, but it won't be as much expenses in the group home as it would be in assisted living. But assisted living, you probably make, uh, mm, I say one and a half to two, two times more than a group home. Nice, wow. Yeah. I mean, I just learned a whole lot of information right here. So let's also talk about the other amazing things that you're doing, such as becoming a fund manager. Yes, yes. Believe it or not, I was supposed to start a fund. It didn't happen yet. Um, ah, okay. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not, 
But talk, talk to us about your fund. What is yeah. your fund all about? Um, how can people invest in your fund? And yeah. is it a fund where other people could also utilize or is it just for you and your projects? So the beauty of my fund, I'm explaining it from you from A to Z um, in a nutshell. So a lot of people do private equity, right? I have a debt fund. It's totally different than what everybody else is doing. Uh, the, I just want to break down a lot of key things because a lot of people are familiar with syndication that were sponsor. Now they all kind of flow fund manager, they all kind of flow it into each other, but the biggest difference with a syndication is it's usually one project, let's say an apartment building, somebody raising money, say here's the IRR returns, this is how much you get. They are equity partner, right? Hence the name private equity. With a debt fund, such as my fund, you invest in the fund, you can invest as little as 25,000. So, and it can go all the way up to millions of dollars, how much you want to invest. So from 25 up to 249, you get 6% fixed return. Okay. From 250 plus, you get 8%. Okay. I pay out twice a year. Now, the good thing about my fund is I do no acquisition fee, no disposition fee, and no management fee. Okay. So the, that's the biggest difference because if you look at private equity, a lot of the sponsors are collecting that money before you even said your projections to your partners. I don't believe in that and my mentor don't believe in that, which is a beautiful thing because I take my profit after everyone else is paid. And as clear as hints is in my PPM and all this other stuff. PPM, if nobody don't know, is just called private placement membrane. So um, is 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 in the name. So no acquisition fee, no disposition fee, and no management fee. So my fee that I can take out of the fund is after everybody else get paid okay. but we pay out twice a year and you, the beauty of my fund having a debt fund your, your money is cross collateralized against all the properties in the fund so you know how a syndication in that example apartment building is just that apartment building mm -hmm. it's usually the sponsor gotta open up another LLC or something like that for another apartment building. mine I don't have to do that mine whatever property it could be 20 properties in the fund your money is cross collateralized against 20 properties so if one project sucks and it goes wrong which it won't but i'm just saying for example is everybody always thinks the worst so right. if it goes wrong the cash flow from the other 19 properties is there to support the investors so that's the biggest difference and i think it's powerful for a lot of people because i take as little as twenty five thousand to get into the fund and you get six percent and I, I pay out twice a year okay now yeah. What are you doing with the money that you, I'm sorry, I'm nosy. What are you doing with the fund that you're collecting? You're investing it in your deals or is it just random people's deals out there? Like, No, no. So I don't, I don't invest in other people's deals. We look at the deals that I'm already buying. So, right. Okay, I'm so already you specifically. Using, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, 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 it's going to be within the fund though. So it's not going to be like, you know, Joe Schmo LLC <laughs> and right. then you get the money right. to them. No, no, no. This is going to be cross collateralized and then the fund will own it. The fund will own it. It's Got just it. the biggest difference is the name is debt. They're going to have a debt secured. That promissory note is going to be secured against all the properties in the fund. That's the biggest difference. So, um, and then it's good for a lot of people because they feel more secure, got a little safety, and mm -hmm. then the fund will be highly liquid. So, um, it then, oh, I forgot to mention the other I can cash people out in 12 months. You give me a 12 months notice, I can cash you out. So, and, and the reason why I can do that, because we're going to be doing a lot of refinances, like I mentioned earlier in um, this podcast, for residential, I will buy it, repurpose it, and sell it. So, it's going to be a lot of liquidity. And then commercial, we're going to hold it for cash flow. So, gotcha. I can buy, I, I was about to say buy people out. I can uh, cash people out by giving them funds back from refinance proceeds or when we do like a fix and flip, you know, so we're able to keep it liquid to cash people out. A lot of funds cannot do that. So um, that's the biggest difference. No, that's awesome. That's good to know. Yep. I'm going to have to watch this back to, you know, take note. <laughs> <laughs> no, this yeah. is like a very meaty podcast, like episode. Yeah, so for sure. For I sure. love, what, no, I really, really love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. What else are you working on? Like, So for, for me, um, my thing is I want some, some investors that want to come into the fund. Right. Um, you know, we're doing some amazing things, not only from, and I really started this because I like helping the community. I, I didn't even talk about it, but I was in the military. Okay. So that's why I started helping people, you know, um, that, that was homeless, be, um, you know, homeless veterans and things like that. 
because mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, it's good for the community and then you can, you know, make a good business out of it. So um, it makes sense. It's a win-win for everybody. You know, um, the, if we look at the statistics, most of the homeless people are uh, veterans, which is crazy. It's so, um, yeah, it's crazy. And then even seniors, if you look at the statistics, I mean, you were just talking about it. A lot of seniors are uh, losing their, their homes. They're getting evicted because the rents are too high. And then the crazy part, too, is we're we not even talking about the seniors that are retiring from their jobs that's been working for 30, 40 years. We're not even talking about them. So that's why the government now is stepping in and uh, giving out grants because there's too many people retiring all at one time and there's not enough housing for them. And I know New Jersey alone, um, when I looked at those statistics and I'm still looking for a good building, commercial building, New Jersey has over 3,000 seniors on a waiting list for these senior uh, living facilities. It's crazy. So, yeah, you know, and I want some investors that want to come in the fund, watch the fund do some amazing things, and then they always want to, you know, can go to a property, we can tour them around, we have no problem doing that for our investors. And right. then, you know, that, that's willing to grow with us. So, you know, um, some good stuff that I'm doing, I just want to take it to another level with some investors. Yeah, um, it's so interesting that you bring that up. I don't know how, I'm assuming you just have it structured as like a um, GP or LP, right? Ah, that's uh, private or equity. LLC. Okay, so. Yeah, it's just an LLC. Yeah, just under when LLC. I was, when I was looking into mine, I wanted to set mine up as a nonprofit. I don't even know. Okay. But because I wanted the foundations that are looking to give away money to come yeah. bring it in here. <laughs> gotcha. So, you know, because I had that dream to start the, um, the group home initially for women right brand is technically built around women even yep. though i love the men too we we, we need each other right. um, but what i think when i niche down to my group home it is going to be for women initially because okay. um i am a woman mm -hmm. there's women not only dealing with domestic violence you have a lot of like sex trafficking victims that are trying to that got right. right you thank god now they're trying to go back yeah. to society and i think i want to be a part of their transition back into society. And this is yeah. where my group homes would take a part. Um, I'm also a life coach. So my life coaching okay. will take a part of it. Um, right. So that's the bigger scheme of things. So we'll talk offline. Mm -hmm. people might okay. <laughs> but okay. like this was so informative. I learned I appreciate that you have definitely poured into everyone that's listening right now. So everyone how they can stay in contact with you or get in okay. contact. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can find me on social media. Um, if you got Facebook, it's just my first name, Anthony, last name Lawson. And then if you want to uh, research me on Instagram, and then you can follow me at Anthony underscore the investor. And then uh, we can take it from there. And then a lot of people don't talk about LinkedIn, but if you like LinkedIn, then you can go to uh, LinkedIn forward slash Anthony Lawson, and it'll pop back up. And then, yeah, I mean, I look forward to, you know, speaking with some people, but we can all do some deals to and then we can all grow together awesome 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 and everyone make sure you like share and subscribe to the journey to develop her podcast you gotta get yep. these subscribers up of course <laughs> and <laughs> yeah and um just look out for all things that myself and anthony are doing whether it's yep. collectively or individually he has amazing yep. things going on and we will drop the promo code for yeah. his course and definitely get in contact with him. All right. Be best, everyone. Take care.